right friends welcome back to facts and figures for 6th week look at the first one government increased allocation for pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin in the recent union budget from rupees 15000 crore to rupees 23000 crore here i would like to tell you few points housing for all is the flagship program of union government so as to ensure house for every individual in this country by 2022 that is one aspect and union government has got two programs pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin other one is pradhan mantri awas yojana arpan and this pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin is looked after by ministry of rural development and this urban pradhan mantri awas yojana is under ministry of housing and urban poverty alleviation and this year budget is increased substantially and the figures i have given here please go through them look at the next issue the disinvestment target for 2017 18 that is rupees 72500 crores and please don't forget in the union budget this is categorized as non debt capital receipts capital receipts means you are getting something either as a loan or as receipts by selling something the capital receipts of union government will be of two types debt capital receipts debt capital receipts means borrowings non debt capital receipts non debt capital receipts means example is this this is disinvestment disinvestment means selling government's ownership in public sector enterprises when some property is sold the income is capital receipts please don't forget so for the union government this disinvestment income is non debt capital receipts that is one part and disinvestment all of you are familiar selling government's stake it can be minority stake sale or strategic sale that means selling majority stake sale and last year the target was rupees 56500 crore but unfortunately for the past 3 4 years the targets could not be met the target could be achieved only up to 60% 70% something like that and this year the target is rupees 72500 crore out of this minority stake sale will be 46500 crore and strategic disinvestment that means selling the majority stake sale that is the strategic disinvestment that is 15000 crores and another important aspect is through listing of general insurance companies rupees 11000 crores listing of general insurance companies please look into this picture government recently announced that these five general insurance companies will be listed and at present the government stake holding is 100% in these five companies government's stake holding is 100% in these five companies but now government is going to sell 25% in each of them by listing in stock exchanges and by way of selling 25% in each of these general insurance companies government is expected to get rupees 11000 crores that is a part of this 72500 crores so this is all about this disinvestment target in the budget which you can say non debt capital receipts right and here please don't forget gicre is the reinsurance company it is india's only reinsurer and remaining four are general insurance companies which is in the business of selling insurance to firms as well as individuals the purpose of this reinsurance company is it will take part of the risk from other general insurance companies look into the next one government wants to provide high speed broadband connectivity on optical fiber for more than 150000 gram panchayats by the end of 2017 18 two three important points i would like to tell you 
the name of the program previously it was national optical fiber network and now the name is changed to bharatnet what is the purpose of bharatnet the purpose of bharatnet is to connect overall 2 lakh 50 thousand gram panchayats across the country with the high speed broadband and in the first phase by the end of 2017-18 financial year 1 lakh 50 thousand gram panchayats out of total of 2 lakh 50 thousand gram panchayats will be connected so if someone talks about the bharat net that is giving broadband connectivity across the hinterland to various villages look at the next one allotment for bharat net program we have just now discussed about bharat net and the allotment this year is rupees 10000 crore and at the same time please don't forget i would like to add certain things wi-fi hotspots and access to digital services will be available at low tariffs and another flagship program of indian government please don't forget that will be dizzy gaon what is dizzy gaon dizzy gaon means provision of telemedicine education and skills three things provision of telemedicine education and skills through digital technology to the people this is made possible when this bharat net program is expedited so i thought it appropriate to tell you about dizzy gaon at this juncture so dizzy gaon if someone talks about it it is basically provision of telemedicine education and skills through digital technology to the people look at the next one government plans to eliminate kala azar filariasis by 2017 and government in the union budget speech it was announced that government wants to eliminate certain diseases by certain target dates first one is this kala azar filariasis these will be eliminated by 2017 leprosy by 2018 measles by 2020 and tuberculosis by 2025 and eliminating tuberculosis by 2025 is the biggest and real challenge for the government and recent times drug resistant tuberculosis is the real worry for the world and another important announcement in the budget is 1.5 lakh health sub centers health sub centers are situated in major villages and small towns and this 1.5 lakh health sub centers will be transformed into health and wellness centers right so these are the initiatives in the union budget and another important aspect in the budget is a new program sankalp sankalp was announced in the budget three four points i would like to tell you what is the full form of sankalp sankalp means skill acquisition and knowledge awareness for livelihood promotion please remember this full form this is skill acquisition and knowledge awareness for livelihood promotion and the second important point is what is the purpose of this sankalp sankalp main purpose is giving market relevant training market relevant training is very much essential basically to bring youth nearer to the jobs the skills of the youth must be improved and they should match with the market relevant skills so market relevant training will be given to 3.5 crore youth at a cost of rupees 4000 crores and this will be implemented by the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and please don't forget there is already a mission which is known as skill india mission skill india mission main goal is to improve skills of 40 crore people by 2022 please don't forget these are the flagship programs of uh, union government look at the next one in 2017-18 government would launch strive this is another program just now we discussed about the sankalp second important program is strive what is the meaning of strive 
strive means skill strengthening for industrial value enhancement skill strengthening for industrial value enhancement what is the purpose of this basically the purpose of this program is to impart market relevance of occasional training in iti's so for improving occasional training in iti's industrial training institutes so this strive is meant for improving the vocational training in iti's and the previous program sankalp is basically providing market relevant training so these two schemes please don't forget and strive means skill strengthening for industrial value enhancement basically to improve vocational training in iti's and the allotment in the budget is rupees 2200 crore for sankalp the budget allotment is rupees 4000 crores and for strive the budget allotment is rupees 2200 crore look at the next one rupees 1900 crore will be spent basically for computerization and integration of 63000 primary agricultural credit societies two important aspects i would like to tell you these will be brought under core banking this primary agricultural credit societies will be brought under core banking and they will be integrated with district central cooperative banks all of you are familiar with district central cooperative banks these 63000 pscs will be integrated with district central cooperative banks and second point here to note is this will be implemented by nabard third point is budget allotment is rupees 1900 crore these things don't forget look at the next one the target for agricultural credit for 2017-18 is rupees 10 lakh crore and we discussed in why and how pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana will cover up to 50% of crop area by 1819 and the allotment for pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana is rupees 9000 crore and additional rupees 20000 crore is given for long term irrigation fund rupees 5000 crore for micro irrigation and these two will be implemented by nabard and electronic national agriculture market will be expanded from 250 to 585 and each electronic national agriculture market will be given rupees 75 lakh at the same time dairy processing and infrastructure development fund will be set up the allotment for this year is that means during 2017-18 will be rupees 2000 crore and over a period of 3 years total allotment for this dairy processing and infrastructure development fund will be rupees 8000 crores so these are the important activities as far as agriculture is concerned in union budget 1718 it was announced that strategic oil storage in the caverns at present there are three locations where this crude oil is stored that is strategic oil reserves that means to take care of around 10 days or 15 days of our fuel requirements if something happens outside world if something happens for the supplies government should take care of the requirements keeping that in mind three facilities underground storage facilities were created at visakhapatnam in andhra pradesh mangaluru and padur in karnataka and now in this year's budget at two more places this type of storage facilities will come up one is chandikol in odisha and the other one is bikaner in rajasthan right look into the next one this is government plans to introduce 20 lakh aadhar based pos devices by september 2017 and they will work with aadhar as the base look into the next one Union Finance Minister allocated rupees two lakh seventy four thousand one fourteen crore for defence, and please don't forget 
government's total expenditure is around 21 and a half lakh crores around 21 and a half lakh crores is the government's total expenditure and for defense purposes the expenditure is 2 lakh 74 thousand crores and this excludes pensions of defense personnel excluding pensions of defense personnel the expenditure for defense is 13 percent of uh, total allocation of central government's expenditure and it comes to 2.5 percent if we add pensions if we add pensions total defense expenditure comes to 2.5 percent of gdp and if we subtract pensions it comes to somewhere around 1.6 to 1.7 percent and here capital expenditure is rupees 91000 crores capital expenditure is basically needed because of the reason in recent times government announced procurement of several defense equipments like rafale fighter jets as well as m777 howitzers as well as chinook and apache helicopters so government is going to procure these equipments from abroad so the need for capital expenditure the need for more and more capital expenditure what i mean to convey exists in defense sector then name the country which became the first to completely divest investments from fossil fuel related projects and the country is ireland please look into this this is ireland and the four regions are part of united kingdom united kingdom england wales scotland northern ireland these four put together is united kingdom and this ireland is a separate country and ireland recently stated that it will divest investments particularly in coal oil and gas within a period of five years all the investments in coal oil and gas will be taken out or divested basically the intention is to give more emphasis for renewable energy and basically to control carbon emissions the country please don't forget ireland look into the next one government of india has signed financing agreement with world bank for ida credit of 201.50 million dollars two things i would like to tell you this international development association is a part of world bank world bank has got two organizations ibrd as well as international development association the main purpose of international development association is to look at poorest of the poor countries that is the main purpose that's why it is established in the year 1960 ida is a part of world bank and another important aspect is this 201.50 million dollars will be for technical education quality improvement program and basically to improve the efficiency of engineering education in some north and northeastern states along with andaman and nicobar islands look into the next issue new u.s secretary of state is rex tillerson name is not important but i would like to tell you few things in united states and india there is small difference in the designations of important functionaries because of the reason india is a parliamentary republic usa is a presidential republic and here i have listed out rex tillerson is u.s secretary of state and that is equivalent to minister for external affairs in our country Similarly, U.S. Secretary of Defense is equivalent to Minister of Defense in our country. So, these things don't forget. And James Mattis is United States Secretary of Defense. So, look into the next issue. 40th Raising Day of Indian Coast Guard was celebrated on February 1. And another important aspect is Indian Coast Guard is under the Ministry of Defense along with Army, Navy, Air Force. Indian Coast Guard is also under the Ministry of Defense. 
basically it looks at enforcing regulations within the maritime zones of india and another important aspect is it came into existence on february 1 1977 then look at the next one this month long exercises of indian navy the name is theater level readiness and operational exercise or tropex 2017 so if someone talks about the tropex 2017 these are the exercises by indian navy and they were undertaken recently look into the exercises this is a picture and world wetlands day was observed every year on february 2nd and this year's theme is wetlands for disaster risk reduction and basically this is to commemorate the adoption of wetlands convention on february 2 1971 basically to create awareness about the value of wetlands for humanity and the planet recently union government constituted a committee to prepare a yoga protocol for diabetes control yoga protocol for diabetes control was recently prepared and this will be headed by hr nagendra famous yoga expert hr nagendra will head 16 member committee basically to devise yoga protocol for diabetes control because in our country several people are affected by diabetes look into the next one sardar jugender singh former chief of central bureau of investigation or cbi passed away recently then new ceo and managing director of national stock exchange national stock exchange former md and ceo resigned due to personal reasons so chitra ramkrishna resigned and new md and ceo will be vikram limaye at present he is md and ceo of idfc so these things don't forget nasa's juno spacecraft when someone talks about the juno spacecraft which was launched by 2011 by nasa basically to study jupiter's composition and evolution basically to explore jupiter this juno was sent by nasa and it recently completed the fourth flyby flyby means coming nearer to the planet and it will be in a phase of further exploration that is the meaning of a flyby looking to the picture then next issue lakshya sen from india became world's number 1 junior badminton player in the latest rankings of badminton world federation in the latest rankings lakshya sen got the first rank and he is from uttarakhand and he won the 2016 senior india international series badminton tournament look at the next one world's longest commercial flight world's longest commercial flight was undertaken recently that was between doha and auckland in new zealand the distance is 14535 kilometers 14535 kilometers and covered in around 16 hours right looking to the next one india and austria have signed a protocol to amend the existing double taxation avoidance convention between the two countries and double taxation avoidance convention amendments are basically to help curb tax evasion and tax avoidance and it will also enable mutual assistance in collection of for taxes look at the next issue queen elizabeth has become the first british monarch to reach the milestone of 65 years on the throne and please don't forget when something completes 65 years it is known as sapphire jubilee sapphire jubilee means completion of 65 years look at the last one union government constituted a six member committee to improve india's hash policy i would like to tell you certain background with regard to this supreme court in the year 2012 ordered 
gradual abolition of horse subsidy government gives horse subsidy and that means for the pilgrimage to horse horse is in saudi arabia and for the pilgrimage government gives a subsidy supreme court in 2012 stated that gradual abolition of horse subsidy to be done by 2022 supreme court's contention is this expenditure can be used for other social development aspects and the second important point is government to devise various guidelines one committee was constituted headed by afsal amanullah former consulate general of india in jeddah right friends with this we came to the end of facts and figures have a nice day thank you